we decided to head to London, where we sat down recently with Israel's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Mark Regev, to learn more about Israel and the UK. Take a look. Well, Ambassador Regev, thanks so much for joining us here on The Watchman Show at the Israeli Embassy in London. It's a pleasure having you, a real pleasure. Yeah, it's great to be back with you, Ambassador. Hey, we know, obviously, that the US and Israel have this special relationship, but the UK and Israel also have a very crucial relationship. Tell us, and you've seen this up close in your role, obviously, as the ambassador here in the UK for Israel. Tell us about that Israel-UK bond, why it's so strong, and why this is such an important alliance, not only for the Jewish state, but for the UK. So first of all, Eric, what you said up front is 100% correct. Israel and the United States have a very special partnership, a very special relationship, and Israel has no better friend than the United States of America. Having said that, the British are good friends too. And we enjoy a good relationship with the British. Uh, we cooperate with them in defense matters. We've got a good trade relationship. We've got a good political dialogue. And the truth is, as you know better than most, the relationship between Britain and Israel goes back decades, if not centuries. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think of that long-standing relationship, Ambassador. I think of the 19th century. Uh, you could say the modern Christian Zionist movement was really born here in Great Britain. You think of Lord Alfred Balfour, William Heckler, uh, all of these pivotal figures in the Zionist movement. It was right here in Great Britain. Correct. 100% Christian Zionism is in many ways born in this country. There's a wonderful book by the a historian. It's an old book. It's not a new book by Barbara Tuchman. And she talks about the ideological foundations for uh, Christian Zionism. And ultimately, the idea that the Jewish people should be free to return to their homeland, to, to, to be able to have national self-determination, to be a free people in our historic land, that's uh, uh, an ideal that was supported by many, many good people in this country. Even more crucial today that we have Christians standing for Israel here in the UK because we do have a rise in anti-Semitism here in Great Britain, anti-Semitic incidents at an all-time high. We even have one political party here, the Labour Party, that's been kind of embroiled in an anti-Semitism controversy. Uh, could you talk more about that, Ambassador? You're here in this pivotal role. You see this up close. Tell us about that problem here in the UK and really across Western Europe. Look, it's terribly worrying, especially troubling for the local UK Jewish community. Who would have thought that in the 21st century, in this country, in Britain, and, you know, they say the British Parliament is the mother of parliaments. And so many of the ideas that inspired the American Revolution of 1776 were ideas that were born British, liberal, democratic ideas, freedom, separation of powers. Who would have thought that in this country, in the 21st century, you'd see the rebirth of anti-Semitism? It's terrible. One of the tactics used by the anti-Semites and the anti-Israel forces right here in the West is BDS, boycott, divest from, sanction the Jewish state. Tell us about the danger of BDS. It's kind of the destruction of Israel by other means, it seems. Tell us about the danger of BDS. How prevalent is it here in the UK and how is Israel fighting back here? The first thing you need to know, Eric, is that these voices of hate are a failure in the real world. They call for not buying Israeli products. I want to tell you and, and your viewers should know as well. Our number one trading partner on the planet is, of course, the United States of America. But number two and three include this country. So all those people are calling not to buy Israeli products. Guess what? There are not a lot of people listening. They're buying Israeli products. Last year in 2018, our third largest trading partner on the planet were the Brits. And this year, I think, according to the numbers, we're going to see the Britons move from three to two to the second place. So these people calling for a boycott of Israeli products, they are speaking hatred, and a lot of people apparently are not listening. Yeah. But we've got to fight them, as you've got to fight all hatred. And I, I mean, I just think that this movement is a modern manifestation of, of good old-fashioned anti-Semitism. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, Ambassador seems to say that the cloak of anti-Semitism is now anti-Zionism. That's the new term for anti-Semites that they're using. I agree, 100%. We, we don't hate Jews, we just think all the Israelis should be killed. What does that mean? Uh -huh. What does that mean? Speaking of which, while we're kind of surveying the threats and the shared threats that Israel and the UK are facing and the United States, the Iranian regime uh, looking to increase their uranium enrichment now, defying the West and, and the Iran nuclear deal. Talk about why the Iranian regime is not just a problem for Israel, 
in the broader Middle East, it's a problem for the West and really all of Judeo-Christian Western civilization, including the UK. Look, it's clear, and you're 100% correct, Eric. It's not just a problem for Israel and our Arab neighbors who are all threatened by the Iranians. It's a problem for the planet. This is a regime that wants to export what they call the Islamist revolution. And, and it's, it's a threat to us all. I'll give you just two very quick examples. We had documented incidents over the last year of Iranian government officials being involved in terrorism on European soil. Documented incidents. So this isn't something that you know, might, might happen or could happen. This is something that is happening. Secondly, the Iranians are building long-range ballistic missiles. Let me be frank. They've already got missiles that can hit Israel. They've already got missiles that can hit our Arab neighbors. Why are they building missiles with ranges to reach far and beyond, to reach Europe, maybe even America one day? Because they see the Western world as their enemy. And to ignore that is to ignore reality. To ignore that is to be like the proverbial ostrich and putting your head in the sand. You're not gonna be safer by ignoring the threats. Yeah. And they have a very dangerous proxy, obviously, in the form of Hezbollah, which also has global reach, even in the Western Hemisphere. Ambassador, last question. You've been doing this for some time as, as a great and eloquent spokesman for the Jewish state uh, in the media, now uh, in a diplomatic role. What drives you? Uh, it, it's a demanding job. You're a family man. We've talked off camera. Uh, what motivates you to do what you do and to dedicate your life to service to the state of Israel? I am a very, very proud Israeli. And for me to, to have the positions I've had, I, I, I feel honored that the state of Israel has allowed me to serve in the positions I've held. I ultimately believe in my soul, in the essential justice of Israel's case, of the cause of Israel. If you think about it, we were a people, the Jewish people, we were scattered across the planet. We were persecuted, we were discriminated against, we faced violence and oppression and even genocide. When we returned home, when we established our independence, our nationhood in our historic homeland. That is a modern miracle. That's something that I think we can all get excited about. And in a region that is plagued by different forms of autocracy, despotism, totalitarianism across the Middle East, Israel today stands out as a beacon of freedom, of tolerance, a, a beacon of democracy. And, and I think those are reasons why every one of, 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 of faith in, in, in humanity, everyone, of, everyone who believes in freedom, they should stand by Israel too. Because we really are, I believe, an island of freedom and tolerance in a very, very difficult region. Yeah, Ambassador, well said. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Eric. Thanks, Ambassador. Thanks again to Ambassador Mark Rega for bringing us up to speed on what's happening in the UK. Well, with anti-Semitism growing in Great Britain, Christians United for Israel is taking a stand. Up next, you'll see how Kufa UK is fighting back against the enemies of Israel and the Jewish people and making a difference in that crucial nation. Don't move.